I wanted to be in the Navy when I first went to Georgia Tech, and the first test, the first day was an eye test, and I flunked. So I, at that stage, uh, decided to go three years to Tech and then go to the military. I'd taken Army ROTC for two years, and I, one of my friends told me about the Coast Guard. In fact, you could go in for six months, and that had a huge appeal to me and served six and a half years in the Reserve. My father was a lawyer and a small town farmer and lawyer in a small town in Little Georgia. And he was very ill at that stage, or getting very ill, and I knew I had to be on a fast track. So the six months, the fact that the Coast Guard training was so similar to the Navy, which I had aspired to originally, uh, all of that had a great appeal to me. Well, I love Cape May, and I enjoyed uh, being uh, right there on the ocean. I enjoyed the educational part of the uh, boot camp. I was uh, a little surprised we did so much classroom work. I thought uh, most of it would be physical, but it was a good blend of both. And I also remember that uh, I had a lot of um, young men from uh, either Philadelphia or New York. There weren't many Southerners in that crowd. And one of the things I was struck by was how hard it was for a number of them to swim and uh, they'd never been around water and so forth. But I also recall that uh, my chief petty officer was, I believe his name was Gillum, and my, uh, uh, his top assistant was uh, Gibson. And I remember how much I liked the, the, uh, the leadership of the Coast Guard. I enjoyed the instruction. I enjoyed it as a learning experience. And uh, I loved the idea of uh, the, the uh, Coast Guard in peacetime being so active. So you didn't have to wait for a war and just train for getting into combat. You were really a tremendous role in peacetime. Well, I have to confess, one of them was uh, staying at Cape May after my first three months in boot camp and teaching the obstacle course and also teaching swimming, uh, basic swimming as well as some life-saving courses. And I also played on the Coast Guard basketball team. Uh, that was a, a lot of fun. We played Fort Dix, a lot of the Army bases, and I was not there for the whole season. I was there for the first half of the season because I got out in December. But it was, all in all, it was just a, a great experience and most of all, a learning experience and understanding how important it is for unit cohesion, for discipline, for the sense of integrity. All of those things were pounded home, and I think they stuck with me really all of my career. I'd say discipline, focus, uh, understanding how to get along with people that come from different cultures, different economic, different educational backgrounds. All of those things were very important. Being prepared to sacrifice, understanding that uh, credibility and honesty were the hallmark of trust, and the trust is the hallmark of unit cohesion, and unit cohesion is what makes military units, whatever the size, effective. All of those things came through loud and clear. So when I got on the Armed Services Committee a number of years later, and then had charge of the Manpower Subcommittee, my first assignment from then Chairman Stennis, all of those experiences, particularly enlisted experiences, gave me a keen understanding of where enlisted people were coming from and where the uh, not, not enlisted, uh, uh, per the enlisted personnel, how they were thinking, what was so important about incentives, what about retirement, what about bonuses, what about well, all those things that are so important in making the volunteer Army work and the volunteer Navy work and the uh, Marine Corps work, and the Coast Guard work, all of that. Because when I came along, we were in a draft period. By the time I was chairman of the Armed Services Committee, and by the time I was chairman of the Manpower Subcommittee, when I first got to the Senate, it was no longer a draft environment. It was after Vietnam. And all of those experiences that I'd had in the Coast Guard, particularly as an enlisted man, really helped me a great deal in understanding what it was going to take to make the volunteer force work.
Well, working with the U.S. military was the greatest honor of my Senate career. And getting an award from the Sea Services and the Coast Guard in particular, where I served, is something I will always cherish. This represents to me uh, a tremendous evening, a great honor, and nothing is more important to me than uh, preparedness and for the security of our nation. And the Coast Guard plays such a whole, huge role in that. So to be honored by the service where I spent my time is uh, an honor I will always cherish.